Hello and welcome to your breakthrough hour. I'm here to tell you that no matter whatever you're facing in your life, whether it's in career, relationship, health, whatever the challenge may be, God can still change it. He is God of breakthroughs and He is able to intervene in that situation. I am Pastor Paul Moses and uh, such a joy to connect with you even through this broadcast. Today I want to share with you on the right mentality about money. It's been a year since the COVID-19 entered planet Earth and we know the kind of changes that has happened, especially in terms of the laws of lives and not only that even the everyday life has changed so many businesses have gone through difficulty and everyone in some way or other has felt it especially in the financial side so many have been going through challenges it might be layoffs it might be pay reduction Whatever you have been going through. Today, I want to help you through the Word of God of how to actually walk in financial authority or financial deliverance. The Bible says, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, that it is the blessing of the Lord that makes one rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. When God blesses his children, prosperity, which includes finances also, is definitely a consequence. God wants you to prosper and be in health just the way your inner being, your soul prospers. So when God sends his blessing, the very strong mark that it carries is he does not add sorrow, which means that is peace. Prosperity always comes with peace when it comes from God. That's not the case when prosperity comes from any other source. People can really amass wealth, they can do this, they can do that, they can have power, influence. But without God sending His blessing, there is no peace. We hear about the happiness index, how countries are marked, uh, given a score, and how much happiness is there in that country. And it's interesting that some countries are, are right on the top. Some countries, which are big countries, but they are right at the bottom. But that happiness is transient, which means it can keep changing. But when God sends His blessing and He sends His prosperity, He sends His peace. Now, peace is different from happiness. Happiness can be changing, you know, when somebody gets a new bike, a new car, a new job, a new promotion, a new wife, a new family, I mean, that's happiness. But peace is feeling complete in your heart, which God alone can give. And He does through His Son, Jesus Christ. And that peace is a sense of fullness, is a sense of completeness. And you feel nothing is missing, nothing is broken. And that is part of the package that God sends as blessing. Today, especially, it's important to have the right attitude towards money. Many times people think that, you know, 
maybe we should not talk much about money or, or a preacher should not uh, speak much about money. But that was not the case with Jesus himself. He spoke most of his parables that dealt with money. I don't know, maybe he used it to gain the attention of people, but still Jesus did. I want to give you three mentalities that you can keep in your mind, which can help you see money the right way, because always in life perspective matters. They say the story of five blind men who were brought to feel an elephant and explain. One man, after feeling the tail, said, elephant is like a rope. Another man who felt the legs, he said, elephant is like a pillar. Another man felt the ear of the elephant and said, elephant is like uh, uh, something that they used to winnow, a fan. All three of them were both right and wrong. They were more wrong than right. Elephant is neither a rope nor a pillar or a fan. It is a living being which includes all these organs which appear like something else. It's important if we don't have the right viewpoint on the affairs of life, which includes money, we may end up getting things wrong and going the wrong way. So I'm going to talk to you on the right mentality on money. Number one, we need to stand guard against the poverty mentality. Now, the poverty mentality is given by an example in 2 Kings in the Bible, chapter 4. I want you to read verse 1 to 7. That here is a woman who is the widow of a prophet, comes to the great man of God, Elisha. She tells that her husband had died, though he had feared God. He had a lot of debts. And now the creditor has come to take her two sons to be his slaves. Now that was a very painful situation. Now the interesting thing here is, in spite of this dead husband being a man who feared God, he still had a failure life. So it's one thing to have the fear of God. It's one thing to have a successful life because you have to really have the right viewpoint. I feel maybe he never discussed his problem with his wife and very importantly with his master, his mentor, Prophet Elisha. Definitely Elisha could have shown him a way even before to bail him out of that situation. But here, the wife was wise enough to do that. Very important to have good and godly counsel in our life, to always show us the right viewpoint. So Elisha asks her, what I can do? What do you have at your home? Second Kings chapter 4, verse 10, to which the woman said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. A very interesting phrase. She could have said, I have a jar of oil. But she rather says, I have nothing at home but for a jar of oil. So the whole thing in her mind always was, I have nothing. I have nothing. You know, that is called as the poverty mentality. In other words, you can also call it as mentality of having nothing, nothingness, right? I don't have strength, I don't have health, I don't have education, I don't have a good background. It's all about the have not, I don't have. I don't have money. Now you might ask me, Pastor, when I don't have money in my pocket, how can I say that I have money? Or what else can I say? I can tell you, you may not be having thousand shillings or 500 shillings in your pocket. 
But I can tell you that God has given you enough strength in your arms to do the work that you can do to get that money into your pocket. You have feet which can carry your body, transport it around to do the work that you need to do to get the money. You have the mind and the ability to think through, to do a work, to get that money. So why don't we look at all these things that we do have and uh, we always seem to look at things that we don't have. And that is called as the poverty mentality. Now, I want to remind someone that as long as a man focus, focuses on what he does not have, he becomes more and more limited. He becomes weaker. He becomes sicker. He becomes poorer. The more you say, I do not have what I need, you actually lose even what you have. Or at least you lose the ability to recognize what you have. Because when someone says, I don't have, that someone is actually blind to what they have. That is a sense of being faithless. This woman was a good woman, but she did not have the faith to see what she had rather than she had the disbelief or the unbelief that she could see what she did not have. And Elisha, or God through Elisha, was trying to help her to focus on what she really had. And then Elisha says, go and borrow empty vessels from people who are around and then pour this oil. And when she did, oil was overflowing in all those vessels. There was no more vessel left. She came and told Elisha, and he said, go sell it and close off your debt. With the rest, you have your livelihood. What an amazing story. It talks to us that we should get out of this poverty mentality. You know, there are some people who are always convenient to say that I don't have anything. I don't have money. I don't have food. I don't have clothing. It may be real. But I want to tell you, if you want to defeat poverty, you have to get into a mindset that I have whatever I have. I have strength. I'm able to work. I have brains to think. God has given me still a breath to breathe. So I'm going to do what I need to do. And I'm not going to have a poverty mentality. Let me remind you that poverty is not a situation. It is a mindset. It is a mentality. May the Lord help you to be free from the mentality of have not. And that takes faith. When God appeared to Moses in the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, he reveals himself as I am that I am. In other words, I am your strength. I am your wisdom. I am your healing and health. When God is with you, you can never be in a place of nothingness or emptiness. The second mentality that we need to stand God against is the mentality of scarcity which means the scarcity mentality is, I don't have enough. I don't have enough. In John chapter 6, Jesus preached to the multitudes and on the third day, he told his disciples, let's feed them. And here, Philip says, even we get 200 denarii worth of bread, how can it be sufficient? John chapter 6 Verse 7, and in verse 9, Andrew and other disciples say, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? So, uh, Philip says, this is not sufficient. Andrew says, what are these five bread and two loaves? In other words, a mindset of insufficiency. As long as we have this, you know, this is like saying, you know, what I have is not enough. 
when that not enough mentality is there, that puts a man in a place of constant complaint. You know, I'm not as wise as you. I'm not as beautiful as that person. I'm not as rich as him. You know, I'm not as smart as you. Now, what is happening is that is complaining. You know, God has created you in a certain way and he has put everything inside of you to be a victor and not a loser. But the more somebody complains, the Bible says in Numbers chapter 11, when the people complain about manna and it displeased God, they could have very well asked for meat rather than complaining about what they had. Let's never complain. The attitude to complain can actually remove the joy. What did Jesus do? Jesus did not complain. Oh, is it only five loaves and two fish? Don't you have anything more? Jesus rather took that five loaves and two fish in John chapter 6 verse 11. And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples. So he gave thanks. That's the antidote for even the scarcity mentality. You know, be thankful, be grateful for whatever you have. Don't say, you know, this salary is not enough. Rather say, Lord, thank you for what you've given me. Thank you for the food that you've put on my plate. Thank you for this job. Thank you for the life that you've given me. Thank you for this house, this room. For everything and in everything give thanks. And the amazing thing was all the 5,000 men and the women and children, maybe I think 20,000 people, now they were not eating for three days and now they eat. I don't know how many rounds of uh, lunch really happened. They were full. The Bible says in verse 12, so when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. So they were satisfied. Gratitude brings you to a place of satisfaction and fullness. There is abundance. And on top of that, they gathered. Now, why did Jesus ask the disciples to gather? And they gathered in 12 baskets. The reason was he wanted to teach Philip and teach Andrew a story that you don't get across your need by complaining but by being grateful. When you're grateful, whatever God has given you, it multiplies. And finally, the last mentality that we need to have is actually the mentality of contentment. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 6 tells, Godliness with contentment is great gain. In other words, you want to have abundance in your life, great abundance in your business, in your finances, you want to see great profits, great gains in what you do. You want to have the extra, extra in your appraisals, in your promotions. You want to have the double promotion kind of a thing. Godliness with contentment. Now, both words are connected because... Contentment is satisfaction, but what brings satisfaction is godliness. Now, what is godliness? A deep love for God. A deep, deep love for God. Now, psalmist, he explains this love in Psalm 119, how he loved God so deeply. He says in verse 120, My flesh trembles for fear of you, for I am afraid of your judgments. In other words, psalmist had a deep love for God that he says, when I read your word, I see how you have judged people when they went the wrong way. I'm going the right way today, but it is an alarm. It is a caution for me that if I ever step out of the right way, I'm going to end up in trouble. So that kind of a reverence. So, he had the right ethics in life, the right ethics in relationship, the right ethics in his business, in his career, even the way he used his words. So that is a result of godliness. I want to give you an assignment if you wish to do. Please read Psalm 119 for your own and find out the different words of, you know, fearing the Lord and having reverence for the Lord. 
And you will, f you will find that the psalmist had so much of godliness in him. And we can also learn from the Bible how we can also have that reverence. Psalm 119 verse 63, I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. Now that means those the psalmist had a lot of friends, his closest friends were those who feared God, who loved God deeply. And he removed everyone else out of his closest circle because he realized ungodly people in the closest circle are going to influence my, my spirit through their words. Even the way I speak will change, the way I think will change. And I don't want to do that risk because if I'm going to become ungodly, I lose the presence of God. And it's always the presence of God that brings increase and promotion and prosperity in life. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 5, and David went on and became great because the Lord of hosts was with him. So the third mentality is godliness mentality, a heart that loves God so deep. That's why Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And this is God's will. That God wants you to walk with the right perspective about money. That when you walk out of the poverty mentality by believing God is with you and he is your shepherd. When God is with you, you have everything. You cannot lack anything. And you walk out of the scarcity mentality by being grateful to whatever God has given you. He multiplies it. And then you have the godliness mentality of loving God deeply and you walk in super abundance, great gain. I'm going to pray with you. If you're going through a financial disaster or it's been difficult to run your life, pay your bills, going through a difficult time, even about your children's expenses at university or school, and it's been difficult for you to even make your ends meet. You're bound by debts. Today is your day of freedom. I want to pray with you. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this moment. Your children have connected to you. And I pray for that child of yours who is looking for help from your presence. I pray that mentality that has been kind of harassing your child that they cannot make it that they don't have what they need to have they that that they have that they've not got what they need to have to be successful but i pray that that mentality of poverty and scarcity be replaced with a mentality that God is with me and I have everything. That I'm going to be grateful for what I have. And I pray that today may poverty's backbone be broken in Jesus' name. May the backbone of debt be broken in Jesus' name. And I speak, your child shall prosper. The career shall prosper. The business shall prosper. That job that they've been hunting for years will be delivered to your child and that stagnation will be removed and your child shall move into a blessing, into a promotion. God who blessed Jabez, God who blessed Jacob and turned it into a blessing. Bless your children, Lord. We thank you for you have done it. We receive that blessing, the blessing of the Lord that makes prosperity. There is no place for sorrow. There is peace. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I know God has blessed you today. And if you feel blessed listening to the word and, and, and being blessed through the prayer, do write to me. The, the email is on the screen. We're on social media. And the numbers are there if you want to write uh, if you want to call and say that you've been blessed or you have a prayer request, the prayer lines are open and we're there to pray with you. 
and it's our desire that God would encourage you as you as you take part in this program week after week you're going to be blessed to be a blessing remember when God gives you prosperity he also gives you peace and peace is nothing is missing and nothing is broken see you again same time same day next week it is a good desire to reach heights in life the scripture says it is good for a young man to bear his yoke many times to reach the great things in life there are opportunity for shortcuts always remember let us never take those shortcuts god has a way and there are at least three things we need to remember to take god's way number 1 god is interested in our character molding than in our promotion look at the life of joseph before god could raise him as a prime minister of egypt god molded his character and that's not an easy thing to get pure gold gold is put through fire and diamonds go through enormous pressure to become one so we have to let go of ourselves that god could mold our character as job said when he has tested me i will come forth as pure gold secondly we need to give importance to the small things in life we need to get to the big things the bible says he who is faithful in small things will also be faithful in big things for two people to arrange a chair one might actually push it hard way and carelessly the other person may do it very carefully and perfectly that's a big difference because even in major airplane accidents once i saw that it was one bolt which was loose that caused a huge disaster and loss of lives and property may we always pay attention and be sincere in small things in everything that we do and finally god wants his children to work hard no matter how small the work is how simple it seems to be be a man who gives all your heart to work hard on the skill on the talent in the study that god has given you in your workplace in whatever god has given you when you work laboriously the bible says he who sows in tears will reap in joy and surely god will help you see the day when you will be blessed and be a blessing